In Cardiff City Centre in particular, we had a real problem. Um, you know, we were really concerned about Castle Street, which is the, the main, almost a dual carriageway, four lanes of traffic right in our city centre, very narrow pavements um, and not a very welcoming uh, environment in, in normal times, never mind in times when people are very keen to, you know, are going to feel, feel maybe nervous and uh, have issues around physical distancing. So the first things we did was put in um, some widened pavement space and additional um, bike uh, lane space. But now actually we've closed that road, um, which has caused some controversy. But l looking at the alternative, it really doesn't bear thinking about. To think that we'd allow four lanes of car traffic back, uh, you know, buses, taxis turning around, people getting off while they're feeling uh, unsafe, vulnerable people trying to socially distance um, would, would, like I say, wouldn't have been, uh, doesn't bear thinking about. So uh, I'm pleased we've taken that decision. And actually, one of the big reasons we, we came to that, a lot to do with safety and obviously to do with things like improving active travel, but also as a, a, an economic necessity. If the shops are going, to op uh, are, are going to open and the businesses are going to open, they need a workforce. The workforce at the moment um, are going to struggle to get in by, by bus for the, for the foreseeable future. So making it um, safe and, and uh, enabling people to use active travel to walk and cycle is going to make a big difference to business as well to allow them to get their staff and customers in. As well as that, a number of, a number of places we're identifying where we've got places where there's na narrow pavements around district centres, you know, shops and, and retail are looking to open safely. So we've worked on a pilot on Wellfield Road where we've actually taken out or, a, a lot of uh, park, uh, cars that normally park there they can still park nearby, but actually outside the shops, we've taken it to, to widen those pavements because people are telling us that, that you, you know, if it's a two metre rule, they weren't going to be able to, to stand, stand safely. And you could see that when you went there, people felt unsure. So we want to make it a, a safe and welcoming environment so people can, can start going about um, their day to day lives better, go to the shops, uh, go to a, a cafe and, you know, meet their friends and things like that. So we're trying to get things to open up feeling safe and, and welcoming. And what about children getting to school? How are we going to make sure that they can walk or cycle safely? Yeah, so we've uh, rolling out at quite some speed now our, our safe uh, school safety scheme, school road schemes, school street schemes even. Uh, we, we, we'd had a head start on that because we'd, we'd piloted five of those earlier this year uh, where we're closing off the streets outside schools so kids can, can get to, to, to school in a much safer way and uh, find it safer, especially if they want to, to walk, cycle and, and scoot. But because of the, 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 um, the current crisis, that's also meant it's important because of physical distancing as well. So another reason, we know that some young people are quite nervous about going back to school after what's happened. So we were really keen to create that safe environment. So we managed to get, uh, working with the schools, 26, I think, or 27 schools, um, which we're really pleased about um, in the main primary schools, who've come on board with us and helped us plan uh, where and how the, the, the which street should close. It's just for an hour at the beginning and the end of the day and to create that safe space. And, and we've had really good response from the kids. We just think it's really important for that last, uh, particular for that bit right by the school that they can, you know, literally, you know, hop, skip and jump into school with a smile on their faces rather than the ridiculous situation we've got where we've got, uh, you know, rows and rows of, of cars or cars driving too fast around precious little kids who, who, you know, in some cases, their heads are only as high as bumpers. So it's just not on how it is anyway, but I'm really pleased we've managed to, we've, we've managed to get those in and create that, that nice environment for kids. So what else are you doing around Cardiff to make it safer for walking and cycling? So, uh, as you know, we've been trying to make the city a 20 miles an hour city for some time now, and that's still in the plans that the default limit will be 20 miles an hour for the city, except where, where we've got some arterial routes. But actually what we've been doing is we found that there are district centres and areas, um, you know, busy communities where we, we can now do that, that quicker, which we've been trying to do. So in a couple of weeks' time, in, in mid-July, the, the traffic regulation orders will be sealed, as they say, which means that... Um, we can then implement those as, as part of the new layout of, of, that, of that road. So really pleasing that a lot more of the city will now become 20 miles an hour. Something that, you know, in the last few years has become really popular. People come to us saying they, they want this, whereas I think maybe five years ago, it, it maybe seemed, sounded like a bit of a daft idea. So if we can get all the, 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 the speeds down, that will help. Very early on in the crisis, one of the things we realised was that cars were just driving around too fast, maybe because of the open roads. 
We had people trying to, uh, you know, avoid each other on, on the pavement. It's not a safe situation at all. So we've got a lot more signage out there making it clear. This has obviously been in response to, to the current crisis. Um, do you think there's potential for these changes to become more long term? We certainly hope so. I think there's two things we've learned. One is we have learned how we can do things uh, a bit quicker when there's a crisis, and that's not a bad thing. I think we've taken that challenge on of being able to create that, that change and important things around safety. Um, we, we, we now know we can do a bit, uh, a bit quicker, so that's been really pleasing. But, but yeah, where, where they work well, why would, you, why would you take them away? And like I say, when they're, they're also to do with longer term safety for, for, for young people, you, you know, safety issues around cars and and air pollution and things like that, then why would you take them away if people like them? So it has given us a good, uh, a, a good, some good examples of places where we can keep these things in. But equally, if they, if they haven't worked, we can take some away as well. We'll accept if we get some things wrong, not everything's gonna be right first time. And there are a lot of different people we've got to factor in. I'm sure we'll make some mistakes. So how are you engaging with the you know, residents and people in Cardiff on the, the longer term plans for their, for their local streets? Yeah, so there's some really good conversations going on with local councillors um, w- 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 where they've got in contact with people and started to really, you know, I'm hearing a lot more now of people saying that this is important important to them, there's more, uh, more awareness. Also joining some of the Living Streets local groups, we've got a number of groups have popped up around Cardiff where they're getting their heads together on the changes they want to see and that really helps the council um, with its plans. You know, previously it's had a road, road safety team doing a lot of the technical work but it hasn't always managed to get that direct consultation with the residents coming to the council first and it does make us uh, makes it easier for us to get our decisions uh, made but also gets uh, makes it more likely we're going to get it right as well so really encourage people to get in touch also get in con- contact with your school as well let the school know that it's important to you because the surround the surroundings of the school are a, a big aspect of school life so uh, making a bit making a bit of a noise and getting your getting your heads together people get parents getting their heads together with schools members joining uh, living streets groups really makes a big difference